One skill that could really set you apart as a developer is being able to debug tough issues. And one thing that will definitely help you debug tough Flutter issues is using the Dart DevTools. So in this video, we're going to show you how to debug difficult issues using Dart DevTools. And we will pretty much cover all the things that Dart DevTools can do. So let's get into it. All right, so I created an app that has a couple of big issues that we need to solve. I'm going to go through them part by part, and hopefully by the end, you'll be able to solve big issues in your app as well. So here's what the app looks like. You see first screen, we have some layout issues. Second screen, you can't really tell what the issue is here, but I'll show you. And third screen, you also can't really tell, but you'll definitely see the problem when I show you. So first issue is we have a layout issue here. Now layout issues are not too difficult to solve when going through the code, but if you want to do it a lot faster and be more sure about your code, you can open the layout view viewer in Dart DevTools. So you can actually open DevTools inside VS Code. And we're going to open the first inspector page. So this is what your app looks like. This is the widget tree view of your app. And we can click into each of these widgets and see the date, the contents of that widget. And we can go through all the render objects and try to figure out that way. But something neat that Flutter does, so we can go to the Layout Explorer page and you see the center widget is not supported, but if we click on the row widget, we can actually see the layouts of everything inside that widget. So now it shows us here we have uh, unconstrained width, which makes sense. And we can play around with some properties. Let's say we wanted to do fit loose. That doesn't really fix our problem. But if we do flex, let's try zero, doesn't really fix it, but let's do flex one. It not only fixes the problem there, but it hot reloads your app as well and everything's fixed. So we know the problem within our app was that this text widget had unconstrained boundaries as well as the row widget. So now we can go into our code. We see it's true this row widget has unconstrained boundaries. And then you can see if we wrap our text widget in something that controls those boundaries like an expanded or a flexible widget, then the problem is solved because now we have a flex property pretty much defined. So that's a quick and easy way to figure out layout issues within your app and you can just play around and if something is more complex, it'll definitely make it easier. So now let's go to the second issue within our app. It's on this page. You'll probably not notice anything really wrong here. That's because Flutter is pretty fast, but maybe, maybe you saw that little, little glitch and it stopped right there. So what's going on there? For this, we can open the timeline page. We'll get a little error because we're running in debug mode. You'd probably want to do this test on a device because the performance on a device is different from an emulator. But here we are able to scroll around and then refresh this data and we should be able to maybe see a spike somewhere here. And there we can see a big spike in performance right here. This is called a jank and you can see it's defined here. So a jank is pretty much where one frame takes a really long time and the rest is all right. Now what we can do here is actually click into this jank frame and see what's going on here. Now this, it says we don't really have too much info on this spot. The way you can get more information is by clicking this enable widget track builds. Also actually before that, we can enable this overlay and we'll be able to see the problem show up a little bit easier on here. And then when we refresh, we'll definitely see jank frame right there. So what happens when we click enable tracking widget builds is it tracks all the builds of the widgets that happen. And it's off by default because it actually takes a lot of resources to do this. But if you're trying to debug it, it's definitely worth it. So let's click this on and we want to find that jank again. You see it right there. Let's refresh, select this jank frame. And now you'll see we'll get a lot more data here. Now we can go through this. Remember before it stopped at the build part. Now we can keep going through and we'll see that actually is this thing called expensive widget that's taking a lot of time. And if we zoom in, you'll see there's a lot of things going on here and a bunch of text going on. Let's see what's that all about. So we have this widget, expensive widget. We can go to the code. We don't even have to look through our app or anything. We can just search for it. And there we go. We have this expensive widget being returned in our jank screen. We go to it, we'll see that it's actually a stack of a thousand widgets in here. And it happens on the 20th index. And if you see right here, number 20, it's actually a lot bolder since there's 20 of those text widgets stacked on top of each other. And that's definitely what's causing our performance issue. Obviously, 
something like this is pretty easy to debug but if you have a bigger app more complex app and you're not sure what's going on this is definitely very useful so using the flutter timeline is a great way to find jank screens and jank frames i guess but what if there's an overall app performance issue maybe something that doesn't necessarily cause a single spike but overall just takes a lot of time for your app to compute and takes up a lot of resources we can find that information using dart dev tools as well so this time we'll actually open up the performance page instead of the timeline page We'll get this error again because we're in debug mode, but I'm hoping you don't, you're not doing this in debug mode. Make sure you launch on the device. But this performance view is a more typical debugging tool where it records all the activity on the phone and tracks the CPU usage for each method or each service. So for this one, we'll go to a third screen. We'll hit the record and start scrolling a bit and you'll see our app is really struggling right here. Now we can stop this and we'll get these charts. This first chart is a flame chart. It kind of shows down a, a little frame or top-down view of what's actually taking all the time. So you see this all is the total time it's taken and it can keep going down and you'll see things like draw frame, invoke, run, bush layout, all these things that happen within Flutter. And then you'll start getting down here and you'll see some crazy things like Fibonacci. You see that actually ends up taking a lot of time and that's not a Flutter method or anything. That's, that's something different. So that's something we should definitely take a look at. But the flame chart isn't the only way to look at things. We can go to the call tree as well. Call tree is very similar to the flame chart, except instead of being a nice flame chart like visual, it's just a big list of things. So you can keep going down. You see this takes up 99% of the time and you can keep going down all the way and I'm sure you'll find something called Fibonacci down there as well. But there's an even easier way and it's called this bottom up chart. If we click on it, it'll show you from the bottom up what takes the most time and then what takes the least time going down. So we'll see 92% of the actual time taken to render these frames is in this Fibonacci method. So that's 100% our problem here. If we go back to our app, we can just again search for Fibonacci. And there we go, we have our performance screen and we have this Fibonacci function. And we'll notice here, we return a text of that calculates a Fibonacci for 30 iterations and displays it for every item in the list. That's definitely gonna take a lot of time. And debugging these problems is definitely the most important part, but how to find a solution is a whole different issue. But a couple ways you could definitely solve this is you can make it asynchronous, you can pre-compute it before going to the screen, or even the best way, like we discussed in the last video, is you're actually using a Dart isolate. This is the perfect situation for this. You can run this function on a different thread using the compute function most likely and your actual app performance shouldn't suffer at all. So those are the three big issues that we wanted to solve. And then there's three more beneficial tools you could also use to debug even other types of problems. We have the memory tool. So if we were plugged into a device, it would show you not just the memory of your Dart, it will also show you your device memory as well. But with this, here's what we can do. We can, you'll see if we go to our app, we'll change some stuff up. It'll actually use different amounts of memory. And we can take a heap snapshot at a specific point. We can go through all this list of things to check what type of widgets are taking up, how much memory, how many times they are called. We can go to the Dart UI, and you'll see that we have the brightness widget called three times, the color widget called 104 times, and you can see all that data. And you can also go to a heap tree map. We can see all that data in a tree map as well. This one's a bit more hard to understand for me, but it helps you then it's great. Another super useful tool is also the network debugging tool. This will basically give you a recording of everything that goes over the network through your app and into your app, and you'll have all the data of what's being transmitted shown in here. Now, the current app doesn't actually have any network data being sent out or retrieved, so we won't really see anything, but it's pretty straightforward. It just gives you a list of every request and you can click into it and see the data there. And then the last one is the logging page. This one is also really straightforward. It just shows you all the logs. And you'll see, we can see a lot of these flutter frames because they're being built. And you can actually add custom logs in there. For example, I have my amateur coder log. And you can search for that log and see when it happens. You can add data in here so you know exactly what type of data was sent at that time. And they could definitely be very useful. So that's a quick run through of Dart DevTools. They are super useful for going from an amateur developer to a pro. It's something that you should definitely learn to use if you're building bigger apps or you're working with code that isn't so clean maybe. And knowing how to use Dart DevTools will definitely set you apart. For more information on Dart DevTools, make sure to check out flutter.dev. They have great documentation on it that could teach you even more than I did here. But for now, that's it. This example app with a bunch of problems will be on GitHub if you wanna check it out. The link's in the description. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.